Good afternoon. Welcome to This Week in Turkey. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo visited Ankara on Wednesday to hold talks with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Foreign Minister Mevlüt Çavuşoğlu over the disappearance of Jamal Khashoggi, a dissident Saudi journalist who has been missing since entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul on October 2nd. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo met President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Foreign Minister Mevlüt Çavuşoğlu in Ankara yesterday to discuss the disappearance of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi as pressure mounts on Saudi Arabia to provide answers following Turkish allegations that he was tortured and murdered in the Saudi consulate building in Istanbul earlier this month. Erdogan received Pompeo at Esambo International Airport at 10 past 10 a.m. local time in a 35-minute long meeting ahead of his official visit to Moldova. Foreign Minister Mevlüt Çavuşoğlu, head of the International Intelligence Service Hakan Fidan and presidential spokesman Ibrahim Kalın, as well as U.S. Special Representative for Syria, James Jeffrey, also attended the meeting. Prior to his visit to Ankara, Pompeo went to Saudi Arabia, where he had talks with Saudi King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman over the disappearance of Jamal Khashoggi. U.S. President Donald Trump gave Saudi Arabia the benefit of the doubt on Tuesday, even as U.S. lawmakers pointed the finger at the Saudi leadership. Foreign Minister Çavuşoğlu has said Pompeo would provide information about the case after Hashochi, a U.S. resident, vanished during a visit to the consulate on October 2nd to collect marriage documents. Çavuşoğlu provided no details following his two meetings at the airport with Pompeo, and President Erdogan described them only as beneficial and fruitful. Pompeo did not address reporters. Turkish officials have said they believe Hashochi, a prominent critic of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, was murdered and his body removed. Turkish sources have told Reuters the authorities have an audio recording indicating Hashochi was killed inside the consulate. The Saudis have strongly denied those allegations, but U.S. media outlets have reported they will acknowledge he was killed in a botched interrogation. Trump has speculated without providing evidence that rogue killers could be responsible. Turkish investigators searched the consulate for the first time on Monday night, gathering strong but inconclusive evidence that Hashochi was killed there. Erdogan has indicated that parts of the consulate had been repainted. A search of the consul's residence and vehicles was delayed after the consul returned to Riyadh on Tuesday. Yesterday, the Saudis did not want the search to be done since the consul's family was inside, Çavuşoğlu said. However, according to the information we received, we expect to get a permit today. We'll continue with the latest updates on the case of the missing Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The disappearance of journalist Jamal Khashoggi from Saudi Arabia's consulate in Istanbul nearly two weeks ago has sparked international outrage. Turkish officials have said they believe the Saudi journalist, who often wrote columns critical of his homeland crown prince Mohammed bin Salman, was killed after he entered the building on October 2nd. Saudi Arabia, however, has denied any involvement in his disappearance. Meanwhile, pro-government Turkish newspaper Yeni Shafak published what it said were details from audio recordings which documents Hashoji's torture and death. The newspaper alleged that his killers cut off his fingers and later beheaded and dismembered him. The report claimed that the Saudi consul general, Mohammed al Otaibi could be heard on the tape, telling those who were allegedly torturing Hashoji, do this outside, you're going to get me in trouble. One of the torturers reportedly replied, shut up if you want to live when you return to Saudi Arabia. Last week, another pro-government paper, Sabah, published preliminary evidence from investigators whom it said had identified a 15-member Saudi assassination squad which had arrived in Istanbul on diplomatic passports hours before Hashoggi's disappearance. Turkish officials have searched the Saudi consulate in Istanbul twice as part of a probe into the missing journalist. Crime scene investigators searched the building and consular vehicles. They have also spent nearly nine hours in the Saudi consul's residence, searching the roof and garage using a drone. Previously leaked surveillance footage had shown consular vehicles moving from the consulate to the consul general's official residence, which sits around two kilometers away, nearly two hours after Hashoggi's arrival. Speaking to reporters at Joint Base Andrews yesterday, U.S. President Donald Trump said that it certainly looks like 
Today we're joined by Turkey's former ambassador to Washington DC, Faruk Looğlu, who will answer our questions on the possible diplomatic and legal consequences of the case of the missing Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Good afternoon, Mr. Looğlu. Welcome once again to This Week in Turkey. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we know that U.S. President Donald Trump initially reacted to the disappearance uh, and alleged murder, actually, uh, of Jamal Khashoggi, uh, the dissident Saudi journalist, with caution, saying that they first had to see the evidence, the audio and video evidence that Turkish officials claim uh, to have at the moment. But Trump's response seems to have changed uh, as of yesterday when he told reporters that it certainly looks like Khashoggi was, was killed. What do you make of this statement by Trump? I think President Trump already has uh, enough uh, in his hands uh, in terms of evidence provided by the Turkish authorities uh, that uh, Jamal Khashoggi has indeed been uh, terminated uh, in Istanbul at the Saudi consulate. Uh, I think uh, uh, he's still playing for some time, uh, trying to uh, give uh, uh, some additional time uh, to the Saudi authorities to come up with a cover story uh, to uh, whitewash the royal family uh, from this uh, horrible, horrible uh, uh, incident. Uh, I think uh, the change of tone uh, in President Trump's uh, evaluation uh, of uh, the country affairs uh, tells all of us uh, that uh, Khashoggi is uh, no longer uh, alive. And um, what do you think the political consequences of this incident will be in terms of the U.S.-Saudi alliance? I think the political consequences uh, will be uh, more uh, for the Saudi regime than it will be uh, for the U.S. I think the U.S. Uh, will try to uh, keep uh, Saudi Arabia uh, on its side for a variety of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, it still needs Saudi Arabia uh, on its side vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, its dispute uh, with, uh, with Iran. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, U.S. is a major arms provider to Saudi Arabia. And uh, this, uh, for uh, President Trump, is a major factor uh, in approaching uh, American foreign relations with other uh, countries. And uh, thirdly, when uh, uh, American sanctions uh, against Iran uh, go into effect on the 4th or 5th of November, uh, it will mean uh, a, reduction, a major reduction uh, in uh, the availability of uh, crude oil uh, to, uh, to consumers. And uh, I think uh, the U.S. Uh, wants uh, Saudi Arabia uh, to to uh, to take care of this problem uh, by perhaps uh, pumping um, uh, more uh, more oil. So uh, there is of course of course uh, the history of uh, uh, American Saudi relations. Uh, they have been close no matter what for for years uh, at an end. And I think uh, the murder of Khashoggi in the Saudi consulate building in Istanbul. Um, as far as we know, international agreements grant consular staff immunity from local jurisdiction, but the only exception is felony offenses such as murder. And we're talking about an alleged murder here. Um, so as my question to you as an experienced diplomat is, how far does this immunity go? Or in other words, could you kill a, a diplomat, uh, sorry, could you kill a person within a consular building and get away with it? Uh, no, uh, no murderer, uh, whether uh, a consular official or even a diplomat, uh, can uh, get away with uh, uh, can get away with uh, this uh, kind of uh, criminal act. Uh, yes, uh, there are certain immunities uh, recognized to uh, consular officials and diplomatic missions. Diplomatic missions have a greater degree of immunity, uh, but basically, uh, I think they stop 
uh, at, the, at the point of uh, uh, murder. And uh, this is the uh, kind of events uh, that uh, seems to have transpired in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul uh, is, a case, is a force majeure uh, case. I mean, uh, a horrific murder uh, is uh, planned, executed uh, in the Saudi consulate. Uh, apparently, uh, the body uh, has been disposed of uh, uh, through a, a, a meticulous uh, planning. Uh, and uh, uh, in no way can we talk about uh, immunity uh, in this case. And in fact, I think that no matter what the criminal uh, dimension uh, uh, says to us uh, in terms of uh, the investigation by the Turkish authorities, and I think they should, uh, uh, if, if they have not completed their evaluation, they should do so uh, quickly, and they should uh, share uh, uh, whatever evidence, whatever conclusion they have come to about the Kashif affairs uh, with the Rome mm -hmm. and uh, involvement of uh, the Saudi embassy in Ankara, they too might be called uh, to answer uh, questions uh, by the by the Turkish uh, uh, prosecutor. So I think we must be uh, fully aware of the fact that uh, there is a criminal dimension. There is a legal dimension, and there is a political dimension uh, to the Kashyyyk affairs. I think most people uh, think uh, that uh, 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 Turkey will have to take certain steps uh, against uh, Saudi Arabia. Not necessarily. I think Turkey's responsibility uh, is uh, to uh, uncover the criminal dimension of this. And any uh, uh, bill, any price uh, that will be paid uh, for this uh, uh, affair will have to be paid by the Saudi regime. And uh, I think uh, there is uh, no reason uh, for Turkey to reflect upon sanctions or measures to punish Saudi Arabia. Turkey didn't commit this crime. The Saudi uh, authorities committed this crime. And Saudi Arabia must uh, punish uh, those responsible for this. Uh, Provided, of course, uh, uh, the uh, 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 possibility uh, of uh, uh, the Turkish courts uh, taking uh, uh, a hand into this uh, affair, uh, that will have to continue. The legal process will continue, no matter what happens in terms of the criminal dimension or the political dimension. But the political responsibility uh, falls squarely uh, on the shoulders of the Saudi regime. I think there are at least two options. One is the cover story that the whitewash the Saudi regime will be to say that we are not responsible, we are not aware of this. Some rogue killers, using the term that President used, did this on their own, so we are not responsible and we are going to punish those uh, responsible. This is one option. Uh, but it may not be enough. Uh, I think if Saudi Arabia wants to come clean on this, uh, I think uh, uh, the uh, king uh, must remove uh, the crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, uh, from uh, his uh, position and replace him uh, with an mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lowell, before we wrap up, let's zoom out a bit uh, and concentrate on the number of important debates that have emerged as a result of the alleged murder of, uh, of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, one of these views suggests that um, this alleged murder and um, grave incident could signal a new battle over, not a new, but perhaps a re-emerging battle over, over the leadership of the Islamic world. Would you agree with this kind of a uh, view? Uh, no, I don't agree with that uh, interpretation uh, because uh, the Islamic world uh, is a huge uh, entity uh, consisting of uh, very diverse uh, nationalities. It's not just Turkey, uh, the Turks, and it's not just the Arabs. Uh, there are Indonesians, Malaysians, Pakistanis, Indian Muslims, Muslims elsewhere. So uh, it would be difficult. Uh, there are Iranians, of course. Uh, it would be uh, uh, difficult uh, to say that the Muslim world is uh, in search of uh, uh, leadership and uh, that search 
uh, is uh, uh, down to a choice uh, between Turkey and Saudi Arabia. This is, I think, uh, uh, this is uh, this doesn't uh, this interpretation uh, is not very uh, credible. It's not one that I hold in uh, esteem. Uh, and uh, Turkey and Saudi Arabia uh, don't have uh, the. Uh, the uh, they are not looking for, for such a leadership. The Islamic world is not looking for, a, for such a leadership. Of course, uh, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and uh, uh, also Iran uh, might be entertaining such thoughts uh, as if uh, they can uh, lead the Muslim world. Uh, no, the Muslim world is not in search of uh, leadership either in Turkey or in Saudi Arabia. Thank you very much, Mr. Loolu, for your comments and for being with us today. My pleasure, always. Today, we were joined by Faruk Loğlu, who commented on the possible political, legal, and diplomatic consequences of the disappearance of Jamal Khashoggi, the dissident Saudi journalist. And we'll continue with our next news video. The Turkish Statistical Institute announced on Monday that Turkey's Ooh. annual unemployment rate rose to 10.8% in July. The Turkish Statistical Institute announced on Monday that Turkey's annual unemployment rate rose to 10.8% in July from 10.2% in June. The unemployment rate occurred as 10.8% with 0.1 percentage point increase. In the same period, non-agricultural unemployment rate occurred as 12.9% with 0.1 percentage point decrease. The Turkish Statistical Institute report read, the figures also show that non-agriculture unemployment rose to 12.9% in July from 12.1% in June, and youth unemployment rose sharply to 19.9% from 19.4%. According to the new economy program announced by the government, the expected unemployment rate for the end of the year is 11.3%. Last week, Turkey's inflation for September was announced as 24.52% while home sales decreased by 13% in August. Yet, with the global developments and the positive diplomatic remarks after the release of Pastor Andrew Brunson, the value gain of the Turkish lira against the US dollar reached 5.5% over the week. Militants in Syria's Idlib province failed to meet the October 15th deadline for vacating a buffer zone created under the Russian-Turkish ceasefire deal. A day after militants missed a deadline under a demilitarization deal for Syria's Idlib, key actor Russia said the deal was still going ahead. The Sochi agreement, reached by Ankara and Moscow, had given radical fighters until last Monday to leave a buffer area around the last major opposition stronghold in the country. But the radical fighters have held their ground, and militant heavyweight Hayat Tahrir al-Sham pledged to continue fighting, despite not taking an explicit position on the deal. The target date for the withdrawal came and went on Monday without any hardliners leaving, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said. Moscow, however, said on Tuesday that the deal was being implemented despite some setbacks. The memorandum is being implemented and the military are satisfied with the way the Turkish side is working in this regard, presidential spokesman Dmitry Pesko told journalists at a regular briefing. Of course, one cannot expect everything to go smoothly with absolutely no glitches but the work is being carried out. On the other hand, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan told US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that Turkey could easily clear the northern Syrian city of Manbij of the YPG if the United States failed to do so, Foreign Minister Mevlüt Çavuşoğlu has said. Turkey is ready to eliminate terrorists in Syria's Manbij if the US is facing difficulties, Çavuşoğlu told reporters following his meeting with Mike Pompeo in Ankara on Wednesday. We have discussed the issue of Manbij. It was a fruitful discussion. We have exchanged views on many issues, including the fight against PKK, Çavuşoğlu said. The US side also accepted that the agreement with Turkey to clear Manbij of the YPG had been delayed, the minister said. Prominent Turkish photographer and photojournalist Ara Güler died on Wednesday in Istanbul at the age of 90. Prominent Turkish photographer and photojournalist Ara Güler died on Wednesday in Istanbul at the age of 90. Güler suffered a heart attack and was taken to the intensive care unit of the Florence Nightingale Hospital in Istanbul. Dubbed the Eye of Istanbul, Güler rose to fame with his black and white portraits of the city. 
Born to an Armenian family in Istanbul, Güler landed his first job as an assistant film projector in one of Beyoğlu's many theaters. His career as a photographer kicked off when he joined a local newspaper in 1950. Güler met world-renowned French photojournalist Henri Cartier-Bresson and became a member of Magnum Photos, an international photography cooperative. By the end of the 1950s, he worked for world-renowned magazines such as Time and Life in the US, the French weekly Paris Match, and Der Stern in Germany, traveling around the world from Pakistan to Kenya. Güler also photographed the likes of Winston Churchill, Alfred Hitchcock, Salvador Dali, Orson Welles, and Pablo Picasso, among many others. Güler's funeral was planned for Saturday. Now let's take a look at what's on in Istanbul next week. Büyük Ev Abluka'da, the alternative rock band enjoyed by the youth of Turkey, will be on the stage of the If Beşiktaş tomorrow to perform their new album. The Akbank Jazz Festival, which kicked off this Wednesday, will host Avishai Cohen Quartet this weekend. The Israeli jazz trumpeter and his quartet will perform at the Jamal Reshitre Concert Hall on Sunday. The 206 Rooms of Silence Etudes on Prinkipo Greek Orphanage Exhibition is on the Galata Greek School until the 10th of November. Artworks, documentaries and visual documents that shed light on the history of the Prinkipo Greek Orphanage by Ali Kazma, Murat German, Dilek Winchester and Hera Büyük Tashcian will be featured in the exhibition created by Hera Büyük Tashcian. That's all from this week in Turkey. Thanks for tuning in and hope to see you again next Friday at 5 p.m. Goodbye.